Project Proposal Presentation 1, short film by Myron Meats entitled My Heart Grows Colder, University of Canberra, 25th August 2020. The themes explored in my movie are self-isolation, confinement, religion, existentialism, mortality, and mental illness. My story explores the relationship between a depressed young man, Morris, and a homeless, mythical, larger-than-life legend, Yandi. Morris seeks meaning in life, despite feeling trapped in his bleak urban environment. After the homeless man's inevitable death, Morris encounters a spiritual awakening when he is touched by Yandi in an epiphany or an apparition, bringing him closer to Buddhism and personal happiness. This transition is depicted through a shift in colour grading from start to finish. Colour is revealed to Morris towards the end of the film, during a spiritual awakening, where he is relieved of his depressive state, formerly depicted in grayscale, and experiences satisfaction after crossing over and receiving a message or apparition direct from heaven from Yandi, who helps calm Morris's soul by letting him know that he is alright in his new transcendent state. My film is very serious and explores realism through narration presented with a strong element of hindsight, looking back on my younger years. Age equals wisdom, which increases the validity of the narrative as it is exposed with narration. Now I've got a quote here from IndiaStudyChannel.com, which talks about how reality is exposed in arthouse films. It is true that most of the general public found it hard to digest the way in which art house films often narrate the story, while commercial ones had all the ingredients to entertain them. To subtly put it, so-called art house films reminded the audience about the realities of life, while commercial ones incorporated their dreams within the narratives and made them more appealing to the public. Now I want to talk a little bit here about the Dream Factory concept. I guess this Dream Factory concept provides an escape from the realities of life, particularly during the shocking events of the First and Second World War, when Hollywood, in its heyday, bombarded the public with 10 or more films every week, straight off the studio assembly lines. I will attempt to use clever, appealing use of vocal emphasis in the voiceover to assist the audience's emotional connection to the story, so it's not dull and boring. I intend for my voiceover to be very much similar to Gordy's enthusiastic narration contained in the following piece, where he relates to his childhood connection with Arthur Beetson and his admiration for his mythical character and legend-like status. I intend to replicate some of his charm in my narration, recounting my friendship with this larger-than-life person. The soundtrack and the narration here work really well together, and that's something I want to execute. I never really saw him play. But somehow, Arthur lived in my early memory, in the unbelievable space, bigger than life. Every time I saw him, he'd ask about my mum and dad, in the dressing room, in the car park, just walking past. How's your mum and dad, Geordie? He always called me Geordie. I wasn't going to argue. Arthur had this warmth about him, a genuine care for us country kids living away from our homes. Well, what a legend. The method of using emotional music to reinforce the power behind the narration in unison here is something I want to produce in my film. The biographical relevance offers the flexibility to be honest and include personal and relatable light-hearted humour. I want to employ this. My film is by no means a comedy, but a dramatic piece of art containing some light-hearted humour. This sums up the strength of Yandi's character. My film will be refreshingly witty in the face of life and death realism, just like this Angela's Ashes excerpt, which I'm about to show you. Some grim reality here. Spiritus Sanctus. Amen. Amen. Touches his pulse. Father Guri is touching me with oil and praying, and that means I'm going to die. But I don't care. It's all very serious and Catholic. Notice the candles there. They're extinguished. Almost like a life extinguished. And then Dr. Campbell came in and held my hand. It was then that I knew I was going to get better. Because a doctor would never fart in the presence of a dying boy. And despite the realistic context, some comedy. My role as an auteur. Auteurism, at its most basic, is the idea that there is an author to a film. 
This definition was taken from Auteurs and Authorship, a film reader by Keith Grant. The following quote was taken from StudioBinder.com. An auteur is a filmmaker whose individual style and complete control over all elements of production give a film its personal and unique stamp. Auteurs commonly direct avant-garde film. This is because directors maintain the freedom not to be restricted to studio-dominant styles and genres. And auteurs and avant-garde film work very smoothly together. Auteurs have a greater control over production to realise their vision. Now I've got another quote here from Auteurs and Authorship, a film reader by Keith Grant. There is no doubt that auteurism's great legacy is that it encouraged a more serious examination of the movies beyond mere entertainment and helped move the nascent field of film studies beyond its literary beginnings to a consideration of film's visual qualities. My visual style will attempt to display the visual qualities through cinematography, color grading and composition. So again, I will concentrate on expressing and intensifying the story through employing VFX and stock music. Now I've got another quote here from the New York Times.com. Hidden away in art house movies, including a recent crop of dramas, are digital tricks that reduce the cost of potentially expensive shots, or, more subtly, help filmmakers heighten the visual impact of seemingly naturalistic tales. The possible accessibility of low-budget VFX capability within After Effects is handy in increasing the visual impact through impressive production qualities to enhance my otherwise naturalistic tale. Similar to the effects in this Amelia excerpt, I will utilize time-lapse and visual elements VFX in addition to an immersive soundtrack. Le 3 septembre 1973, à 18h28 et 32 secondes, une mouche bleue de la famille des de Vincent, à Montmartre. À la même seconde, à la terrasse d'un restaurant, à deux pas du moulin de la Au cinquième étage du 28 de l'avenue Coudaine, dans le 9e arrondissement, Eugène Collère, de retour French. de l'enterrement de son meilleur ami Émile Maginot, en efface le nom de son carnet d'adresse. Notice how the musical score is uh, tied in with the narration. Toujours à la même seconde, un spermatozoïde pour un chromosome X appartenant à Monsieur Raphaël Poulain, se détache des pelotons pour atteindre un ovule appartenant à Madame Poulain, née Amandine Fouet. Some timeless footage of the pregnant lady, Amélie Poulain. There we are. Simplicity. Content is only minimally related to style, and the true meaning of an auteur's film lies below the surface content. Chabrol says, The more trivial the narrative at surface level of a film, the more room there is for the director to express his vision for his style. And again, that quote was taken from auteurs and authorship. In relation to new wave directing in the 1950s, Claude Chabrol also quotes, I want to manipulate imagery time and sound to create an avant-garde film experience. So now I will show Barney's art house film, which featured in an episode of The Simpsons. Interesting close-ups of like the beer bottle there. My name is Barney Gumble. I'm 40, I'm single, and I drink. So notice the film's in black and white. Makes it very artistic. Another art and close and personal shot. There's a line Shadows. in a fellow about a drinker. Now a sensible Notice man. Notice the time lapse in the clouds. This is something I'll be using in my film. Presently a beast. That pretty well covers it. It's very sentimental. It's brilliant. Savagely honest, tender. He has the soul of a poet. You're very kind. Excuse me, did something crawl down your throat and die? It didn't die. My name is Barney, and I'm an alcoholic. Mr. Gumble, this is a Girl Scout meeting. Some comedy? Is it? Or is it that you girls can't admit you have a problem? Always helps. Add a bit of interest in the film, despite the fact it is a dramatic piece. Don't cry for me. I'm already dead. Very symbolic. Very symbolic. My simplistic intentions include two characters or two protagonists, explorative, lots of landscape shots, symbolism, cryptic themes, and powerful imagery working in parallel with narration. Avant-garde film continued. 
Preconceived expectations of Hollywood cinema, ingrained in culture, make avant-garde films stand out as different and experimental. The stunning visual effects I will utilise in my film will be far removed from typical Hollywood explosions, synonymous with the action thriller, and be more subtle and psychological in manifestation, such as the combination of eerie sound effects immersed together with speed motion blurs in the Yarny hospital scene, where it rep which represents a drug-induced state. This different style assists the audience's reception of my film as experimental, setting it apart from the Hollywood formula. Now I've got another quote here from Avant-Garde Film by Scott MacDonald, page 2. These first avant-garde films, in other words, can catalyze what I would like to call our first fully critical response to a set of experiences our culture has trained us to enjoy, primarily as a process of an unquestioning consumption. However, I will attempt to incorporate the precision and outstanding quality and professionalism of Hollywood-esque cinema color grading found in Sin City. I'll incorporate this into my avant-garde film, demonstrating the flexible nature of style and the way different genres share similar notions of composition and themes. In relation to one of the scenes I've workshopped for my film, the expression of highlighting the red rose and leaving everything else in grayscale is executed through the leave color effect within Premiere Pro. This infamously characterized the inventive cinematography style within the Sin City franchise which washes out all of the colour, apart from red, highlighting love, empathy, and all emotions the colour symbolises. Scope I am proficient at Adobe Premiere, Adobe After Effects, Adobe Audition, and Adobe Photoshop. The director of Swedish drama Force Majeure, shortlisted for the Foreign Language Film Oscar, credits his background in graphic design for an awareness that all the opportunities you have with Photoshop can be applied to moving images. These may include green screen background keying and compositing. As well as being multi-talented with a range of software, um, my background at my online business, Conceptual Notion, has allowed me to challenge myself with various visual styles through working with a diverse range of clients internationally. I will be using a Sony 4K camera and a tripod. Skills and knowledge. My media arts and production units studied so far include cinematography, where we studied composition and lighting, sound design and production, where we mix dialogue, screenwriting, where we learned to write a script in professional format, engineering reality, where we learned visual effects, Australian National Cinema, typography, where we also um, learn about typefaces, and this will be applied to the intros and credits in my film. All skills combine into achieving a short film project. Skills and Knowledge Part 2 Now this is a very interesting quote from the New York Times. The main difference in the last few years is probably that it has now become common to integrate visual effects in the script writing and development phase. And that quote was written by Peter Horf, visual effects designer of Nymphomaniac and Meliconia. One such case is my original intention, which I storyboarded, to integrate a glitch VFX and wing special effects to Yandi as he's floating in the clouds. This will be using green screen footage for the apparition scene. I included these details in the development phase. Additionally, my color grading in this scene is currently being workshopped to deploy a minimal lighting style, which effectively drowns out 75% of his face and body in dense black shadow to make him appear dark shaded and anonymous. This hard light effect insinuates and represents themes of death, a blackout after he dies, yet a glimmer of light on the side of his face to display a sliver of hope in the face of tragedy. And the black and white look represents his old age and vintage personality. Exhibition space. My project will be presented with 3D headphones, making of photos, a featurette, and a director's commentary, social media posts and screenshots, a plaque with the film synopsis and director background info, a stack of the big issue magazines. Actually, I should say now that Yandi used to actually sell the big issue when he was homeless. Most importantly, I will have an interview with the director, visualize a movie. And that is the end of my presentation one. Thank you for listening.